So this problem is an interesting problem that involves friction at an angle, and it doesn't involve something being moved horizontally, which is one of the things that makes it very interesting. So we're going to start with free body diagram for situation A, where the block is sliding upwards at constant velocity. Generally, direction wouldn't make a difference. Just free body diagram doesn't really show us direction. But keep in mind that the upward part here is important because if the block is moving upwards, friction, which will always oppose motion and is present in this problem, will be working downward. So if the velocity is that way, kinetic friction will be that way. So the fact that it's moving up gives us information about which way to make fr friction point. So we'll start with a free body diagram. We've got y-axis, x-axis, free body diagram for part A. So the block, all right, has, let's start with the most obvious force. So the applied force is at an angle of, oh, they give us 36 degrees. Now, what is, and that's the angle, though. It's got to be careful. That angle, let's see, the force pushes like this. And we really want to draw it, though, like so. And if this angle is 36, then that means this angle is 36. And that is not our reference angle. I'm going to take a moment and just get our reference angle. Uh, if it was an inclined plane, I'd switch sine and cosine because that's what I remember to do. But in this one, I want to be careful. So the first interesting little trick on this one is we need the, let's see if I can get this right, 54 degree angle that sits right here. So let me draw things a little more to scale so that it makes sense later. So I would have a force that would look something like this and would have a 54 degree angle here. And so the 36 is not actually our reference angle. Our reference angle is going to be the 54 that we see there. All right. Now let's go with some simpler forces that we know are there. Friction, for example, or weight. All right. So it turns out friction and weight, in this case, are both going to be pointed down. The weight of the block is going to be mg straight down. And since it's moving upward, the force of kinetic friction will also be down. So I have two forces down. There's one more force that uh, I can think of here, and that is it's pushing against this wall, so there's got to be a normal force. And the normal force is going to be to the left, which we're not usually running across because we're usually working on problems that are moving horizontally on floors and so forth. But in this case, the normal force is to the left. So we have one, two, three, four, four forces, two down, one up and to the right, and one to the left. And since we have this force at an angle, we need a component diagram. And component diagram, well, three of these forces are just going to stay just like they are. The normal force, the weight, and the kinetic friction, because they're already along an axis. But we need to split this force, the applied force, into its x and y components. So in the component diagram, y-axis, x-axis, we'll keep the forces, we just mentioned the other ones, so we've got normal force, we'll have weight, or friction, and now we're going to break up the applied force into an x component, so force applied x, and a y component, force applied y, which of course is going to be force applied, whatever they tell us, um, well, that's what we have to find. So it's going to be force applied times the sine of the 54. 4 degree angle, and this is going to be force applied, that we, that's the force we're looking for, times the cosine of a 54 degree angle. And now we have our component diagram. We can fill in some of the details here, but let's just uh, 
let's get, use this to make an expression. So we have, looking at this, the block is not moving or accelerating. It's not accelerating in any case, but it, certainly it's not accelerating left to right because it's not even moving that way either. So it's in that case, we just know normal force and the X component of the applied force are the same. So in the X dimension, I'll start there. I know that the normal force is equal to the applied force times the cosine of 54 degrees. In the Y dimension, however, there's some interesting stuff going on. Now, I know that the net force, F equals MA, is just going to come out to be zero because it's moving at constant velocity. Right. So I know this. Now, from my diagram, I also know that my net force, let's see, if we assume that up is positive, then I have one positive force and two ones that are pointed downward. I have F a y, the y component of that pushing force, is up. I have mg down, and I have friction down. Keep in mind that when we go to do the next part of this problem, that the big one of the big changes there is going to be that the friction changes direction. It would also be up in that case, because the block is moving downward. So, I get this expression straight from my component diagram. That's why I need the component diagram. And so I know that 0 equals applied force in the y, which is going to, I'm going to write Fa sine of 54 degrees minus mg minus kinetic friction. That's mu kinetic times normal force. Let's expand that normal force, shall we? That means this is Fa sine 45, that 54, sorry, that doesn't change minus mg, minus mu kinetic. Now, the normal force, you might recall, is just Fa cosine. Applied force times a cosine of 54. Okay, and I'm at the point now where I have, let's go through and see what I have and what I don't have. I know the angle, obviously. I know the coefficient of kinetic friction between them. Um, I know the weight of the block, so careful, that's not the mass. They already did m times g and got 47, so we have the actual weight of the block. So let's see, I know going through, I like to do this, I like to check off. I got the angle, obviously, I know the entire weight, check. I know mu, got the angle, so the only thing I'm missing is fa, and that's what I'm solving for. So I'm ready to go, I just got to plug things in. Actually, let's do this, let's solve for fa first. So We've looked at it a couple times, but if you forget, the trick is this. When you, have, when you see a variable, variable in two different places, get them by themselves and get anything that doesn't have the variable, namely in this case, mg. We're going to add mg to both sides. Get rid of anything that doesn't have an fa. So I'll have mg equals fa sine 54 minus mu kinetic times fa times the cosine of 54. And you might recall that the trick now is to reverse distribute. We're going to take the two FAs and pull them out to the other side of a set of parentheses so that we have FA times sine 54 minus mu kinetic times the cosine of 54 equals mg. And now I have a single FA times something, and I'm going to divide both sides by the something. So I'm going to divide both sides by sine 54, it's another 5, minus mu kinetic cosine 54. And leaving me with mg divided by sine 54 minus mu kinetic times cosine of 54 equals fa. All right. But I have all that other stuff. So I know, for example, I think the weight was 47 newtons. 
Of course, down here I got sine of 54 minus, going all the way back up to figure out what mu was. Mu was 0 0.320. times the cosine of 54. Now I punch the buttons that should give me my applied force. Let's see if we got it right. Got to be very careful when you're doing this um, that you, I would actually recommend that what you do is keep the 47 newtons. Let's just figure out what the bottom is right now. So I got sine of 54 minus 0 0.320 times cosine of 54. That gives me 0 0.621. And that would not have any units. Because sines and cosines don't have units and coefficients don't have units. Uh, friction don't have units. So, I end up with 47 divided by 0.621. And I get an applied force, in that case, of 75.7 .7 newtons. And, of course, that would be at an angle of 36 degrees to the vertical or 54 to the horizontal. So they already gave us the angle. So when they have the magnitude of that force, I have 75.7. .7. Um, and if I check the answers that I have, yes, I got the right answer. You may have the paper with you that has the answers on it. You'll probably notice as well that uh, Wellborn can stu still do physics. Um, so, let's go ahead and do the next part. I would recommend, having done this, that you work ahead a little bit here and, you know, pause the video and see what you can do about coming up with part B, the free body diagram and the component diagram, at least. That would be my suggestion. Um, let me clone this page. Boom. And Okay, so for part B, where we're letting it slide down at constant velocity, how do things differ? Well, if it's moving downward, if its velocity is down, then we should remember that friction is going to oppose that and be the other direction. Everything else is the same. For example, you're still going to have the weight acting down. You're going to have the force applied, not the same size as before. You're definitely not going to have to push as hard. Um, and by the way, if all this pushing of stuff confuses you, um, I should have mentioned at the start, there is a should be another video posted where I discuss what this problem looks like in the real world. You're actually, you know, not a screencast, but a block moving up and down a wall. So that, this part hasn't changed, but the size of the force will change. I still don't know what that, this force is going to be. Right, it's going to be a new magnitude, and that's what I'm trying to find. Um, let me write all that. Okay. I also know, let's see, normal force is going to be pushing off to the left still. And since it's moving down, friction is going to be And I believe that is it. So, going to our component diagram, we keep, say, normal force, for example, stays the same. Weight stays the same direction and all that. Friction's still going to be up. But we take the applied force and we find its x component, just like the last problem, and its y component. Now, in this case, I'm thinking I should be drawing weight larger because it's got to equal out these two forces here in order to move at constant velocity, but uh, we'll go with it. I, I, knowing that is enough at this point, I suppose. So, once again, in the x dimension, the horizontal dimension, the only interesting thing here is that the normal force is still equal to the x component of the applied force, which is going to be Fa cosine 54. That doesn't change. Remember, this is not the same size as part A, so don't go bring in 
the 75.7 or whatever and try to use it here. You don't have to push nearly as hard when it slides down. Y dimension. Still moving at constant velocity, so the net force is zero. Net force from our diagram up here is going to be in the Y. Upward is going to be, let's see, applied force in the Y is up. Kinetic friction is also up. And the de one downward force is going to be weight. That means zero is equal to FAY plus, notice, plus mu kinetic times the normal force minus mg. But we can fill in some of these things. For example, the applied force in the y is FA sine 54 plus mu kinetic times the normal force, which is FA cosine 54 minus mg. And once again, we're after FA. So the remainder of this problem is going to be very similar to the other one. We're going to have mg over here and FA sine 54 plus mu kinetic times FA cosine 54. So I added mg to both sides. I'm going to factor out the FA. FA here, I got sine 54 plus mu kinetic cosine 54. So we see that that plus is really the biggest change between this problem and part A. And FA is going to equal mg divided by sine 54 plus mu kinetic times the cosine of 54. Now we're in a position to plug in what we need. So the applied force in this case is going to be, I believe it was 47 newtons over sine of 54 plus 0 0.320 yes times cosine of 54 54 and once again i would suggest doing this denominator first and by itself just to make sure we get it right uh, order of operations is going to be a real problem otherwise. So sine of 54 plus 0 0.320 times cosine of 54. That gives me 47 newtons in the top and in the bottom now 0 0.9971. So virtually going to be applied force. It's going to be 47 divided by that answer. be 47.1. So it's going to be almost the exact same force as the interesting as the um, weight of the block, just a little bit more. So we have, and that makes sense, a little bit more to just keep it against the board. But other than that, there isn't much normal force required. Um, and so therefore, there won't be much friction either. So that should be that. Don't be surprised if at some point I ask you to do these problems on your own in class or something or for homework. All right, have a good one.